Hello and everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and in today's video we are going to be going to perhaps the most neglected destination in all of Kerbal Space Program. Yes, we are not going to Dreads. No, you thought it was Dreads, but no, Dreads has been made great again, thanks to my series, so I'll put a little card up there if you don't know what it is, it's a little colonization series I have going called Make Dreads Great Again, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is going to be going to the most neglected destination in all of KSP and perhaps the most mysterious because no one knows what it's like because they've never been there. And it's not Drez. It is Paul. Yes, we are going to be going to Jewel's most outer moon today. How about you? Probably don't even remember that it exists. But yes, there is a place card called Paul in Kerbal Space Program. It No one goes there. I don't know. We're going to see if we can... I don't throw up some enthusiasm of this nice little rock that we have right now, which is just depleting its bottom stage, and now we're going to be burning the Rhino upper stage. Pretty basic payload, we're just going to be sending two Kerbals out to the surface today. We have two of three, actually, of our finest Kerbals. We have Valentina Kerman, the one and only. We also have Dave Kerman, and we have Doggy Kerman, my favorite Kerbal, except for Kerbals Kerman, who has not yet made an appearance in XE. He was in the last video, but you can't really see him. We'll get Kerbal's Kerman out very soon, guys. Don't don't show any. But just gonna do our orbital insertion burn right now with our Rhino stage. And then we're gonna get ready to do our jewel our ejection burn out to jewel. Uh, when uh, when that is completed. Uh, yeah, I decided to go to pole today. Um yeah, uh, it's a cool place, guys. You know, if if you have yeah, it's a cool place, guys. <laughs> go to pole. If you've not been to pole, and you know, if you can't, if you haven't gone to the Mun yet, you should probably go to the Mun before you go to Jewel or something. Like the, you know, but Pole is pretty darn cool. Like when I go, you guys will see it in a few minutes when you get there. It's pretty dope, pretty epic place. So hopefully some people can go there. Um, Pole and Bop are probably the two most least think about locations. At least Bop is unique in the fact that it has it's on a super inclined orbit and there is the Kraken Easter egg there, which is pretty cool. Pole has yeah, there there are. There's nothing interesting there, at at you know when you first think about it. But it's you guys will see. It's pr pretty dope place. We'll try and you know get some. We'll try and figure out what's going on with it. Um, and I uh, do want to clear something up, by the way, guys. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, if you're not, that's, this is irrelevant. Or if you follow my channel, if you don't, like, you know, if you keep up on my daily uploads, uh, if you don't, you know, this is irrelevant to you. But um, as I said in the beginning of the series, I do have that Matrix sure Great Again series running. Um, today and yesterday was yesterday was supposed to be a Make Dress Ready Again video. Today is technically also supposed to be one because I said I'd make it up today. Uh, I did not have that much time to record a video, so unfortunately, um, because the Dress video is actually a fairly ambitious video, we have doing something pretty nuts in it. So unfortunately, that video is going to get delayed till tomorrow. We might just do two Dress videos in a row to try and make up for the lost Dress videos. But don't worry, the series is not forgotten. We will get back to it as soon as possible. And if uh, that has, even if you don't even know what I'm talking about, um, I mean, you could feel free to subscribe, but maybe you will, you know. <laughs> Almost had 400 subs at recording this video. By the way, you know, crazy, you guys, thank you. You guys are nuts. I got hit 300 like a week ago. I'm at 400, or almost 400. You guys are just epic. Thank you all very much. Um, also, I have a Discord. Um, I'll stop promoting that as much, as heavily as I have been in the last few videos. Uh, just, uh, if you're interested, we're starting some challenges uh, on the Discord. Um, kind of like the old Reddit challenges for KSP very soon. So if you're interested in joining the Discord or part just talking or chatting or participating in the challenges, uh, feel free to do so. Link in the description. Okay, I'm done talking about myself. Let's get back to the mission. So just flying on out to Dre Jewel Height now. You've done our burn, done our correction burn. Now we're just heading up to the... Uh, Julian system, and we will visit perhaps the most mysterious planet. No one, you know, no one even knows what it's like there. You know, it's 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 just it's a giant mystery that we will soon uncover. What you know, we'll see see what see what kind of crap is going on there. You know, maybe there's some evil snake monster that's gonna murder us. That'd be pretty cool. You know, originally, guys, uh, in KSP, if you don't know, um, there was like a secret extra planet, like past Elu, I believe, that you had to only locate through easter eggs so like there was a a lot some of this is uh, abandoned project but some of the easter eggs still remain like if you go to duna there's a certain t little mound of dirt that transmits like morse code signals that you can decipher and get like orbital information about the planet and there are other easter eggs i, I like i believe the kraken was one of them 
I believe the Val Henge, there's a Henge on Val, that is one another one of them. I believe the face on Duna might have originally been one of them. And the temple in Kerbin, it's, you know, it's really cool. And they all kind of link together and you could find the planet because it's not on the map and, you know, it's super cool. And you could go there, like a mystery planet. I think that had been really cool if it was in the game, but unfortunately it was, it was scrapped a while back ago when, you know, there were some developer changes. But, yeah, nonetheless, that would have been so cool, you know, since we're on the topic of, like, mysterious places. But, you know, here we are. We're getting close. We can get our first glimpse at a pole from, you know, the map view, which is not very hard. A very strange looking planet. It's like a weird, there are a lot of different colors going on here. A lot of different colors. I don't know, not know what the deal is with all those colors. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll investigate, we'll go to the surface, see what's going on. There's also some weird surface features too. Uh, just going to do our circularization burn, it's like red and green, weird place. Doing the circularization burn, about 700 meters a second. I'm just coming into the jewel the normal way, no gravity assist or anything, That is that is boring. Well, I, I just packed that shit LTV, so I didn't have to. Uh, but now we're just attaching the lander, and then it's a... I'm using the Soviet-style uh, lander, can, command, paw, whatever you would like to call that crew habitation area. That's because I thought it looked cool. Might as well change things up a bit. Can't do the same type of lander over time. Now we can start coming in, descending down to the surface, and some spooky music can start playing. I don't know, this is, you know, I might be hyping this up a little bit too much. So it's just coming down now, we're kind of on the edge of a mountain. That's not a generally good idea, but look at this. This has perhaps the most interesting surface features of anything. What is going on here? I believe these may come with a mod though, so. Uh, one of the visual mods, there might have been like Eve might have these that come with them, so these may not be stock, but either way, this is cool. Like normally when you go to a planet, like you have like maybe a tree or a rock, but look at this, this is like, Spiky things. This place is this place is weird. Might as might as well come Kerbals look like they're having a good time. Very, 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 very interesting place. Coming down. This was not the best landing, but we get down. There we go. And you know what guys? Who needs that dramatic music anymore? Let's get rid of that stuff and let's get some better some better tunes for our surface activity. So we've now landed, got SAS turned off, we're back on now. And we can get ready to EV air Kerbals out and they're gonna go have a look at what's going on here. I didn't bring a rover or anything for them, that'd have been cool, but I've done a lot of rovers already. <coughs> I could have brought a drone or something, that'd have been cool to kind of fly around the area. But I also have already done a drone in a few videos ago. But you know, look at this, just walking around looking and in, in, inspecting the big spiky things, running through the spiky things because why not? Just haven't, this thing has a really low surface gravity, I believe it's even lower than Minmus, so this would be like, I think the second or third smallest place in the entire Kerbin system. I don't know if Bob, no, Bob, it'd be the second smallest, I believe, uh, only second to Gilly, so. Interesting place. Now it's gonna try and, uh, there's not really that much to see here beside the spiky thing, so we're gonna try and get back, 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 blah, blah, back on the ship. It's very hard to find the entry point for these modules because it's, it, there's no like clear door like the other ones. This, you just kind of have to feel around wherever it says board you get in. You know, the, the, they're Kerbals. They, I don't know how they fit in there. Their heads are so big. This doesn't need to be one big, yeah, that, that hatch is big enough. You know, to be honest, I don't know how their heads don't just fall off of them, but yeah. Maybe they have just really, really strong necks, but gonna get Valentina back onto the ship and then they can rendezvous with uh, the command ship or the mothership which is being piloted by everyone's favorite doggy Kerman and then we can get ready to do our departure right about now so just gonna be throttling up that uh, spark engine on the bottom attracting landing legs and heading back up into orbit to a rendezvous with the ship and because the gravity is so small we can just kind of do a direct rendezvous because it's a lot easier to judge where you're supposed to start when you're, everyone's everything's moving at like two meters a second relative to each other. So I'm um, just doing a little bit of maneuver node. I didn't even wind up even using a maneuver node at the end. I just ended up eyeballing it, or not eyeballing it, but just pointing retrograde when I got as close to the target. And you know, it worked out. Just gonna be uh, getting our way into orbit, like I said, and then hopefully, yeah, this is when I realized that the maneuver nodes are not doing much for me. 
Um, sorry, I do want to point out, if you guys see that little pink square, I don't know if everyone knows what that is. Um, you'll see it whenever I'm not in the map view or in the, you know, the game view or whatever, whatever it's called. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a pink square right around the craft. That is a glitch with planet shine. It's a bug. It's, uh, it's textures got screwed up or something. Uh, I don't think there's a fix, so it's either planet shine or the pink square, and it's a trade-off. I may just, um, well, well, I'm looking at a way to get rid of, get, you know, if, if, it, if it's just the worst, let me know, guys, in the in the comments, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll just uninstall Planet Shine, but I'm trying to work through a solution. Just going to do a rendezvous now. Very easy to do, just because I have loads of reaction wheels on both this thing and the mothership. I didn't really think to pack any RCS. There's RCS on the mothership. Actually, no, there's not. I removed it all, because when you have craft that can, you know, just flip around so quickly, uh, you can generally just kind of loun lazy method lazy method them together be and you know it's no problem this is exactly how they do it in real life they just use their engines and because ro rocket engines can totally throttle to like one percent that's totally definitely a hundred percent thing they can do not coming in together the mothership does look pretty cool with those solar panels out realistically you probably wouldn't have solar panels because this would be like this is way out there jewel but you know i have the two gigantors and you know they, they get enough power to because this isn't really a you know, this, this, this crap does not have a high electrical load. So we can just kind of... Kind of use the Gigantors to get more than, more than enough. Now it's coming in together, those two small docking ports coming together nice and slowly. And then they, yep, there they go, pulled some load together, and then we are docked up. Now we can get ready to, uh, we'll, we'll just transfer the crew, then we'll ditch the lander, and then we will plan our return trip home to a Kerbin. Uh, we do have about 3,000 meters a second, a little over that, maybe 3,050 of uh, Delta V to get back to Kerbin. Realistically, we only need about 1,500-ish, maybe 2,000. And so I just, um, decided to force an encounter because, you know, I could have just waited for, like, the perfect transfer window and got it out. It would have been all amazing and perfect, but I just... I did this the inefficient way, and I just burned, got out of pole here influence, and then just per pulled retrograde, and then I just kept going retrograde, just increasing the conic path limit there, until I got myself an encounter. It, we got down to like, um, I believe, yeah, like Eve's height, basically my periaps was. So this is not um, the efficient way to do it, but it is the way you do it when you ha are able to brute force things, because we all know when you can brute force things, you maybe should or you could you know try and learn to do it the efficient way but I didn't really have I couldn't be bothered uh, now we're just finishing that burn and then it's just gonna be a matter of one small correction burn to get our uh, periaps into the atmosphere and then it's going to just get down to the re-entry and landing of our three Kerbals safely back at Kerbin after a very long journey in space just to visit some weird spiky ice rock, uh, yeah, spiky rock things, totally worth it, those, they, 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 they Kerbals love space, <laughs> they, every, all space is worth it, they just float around and stretch their, their neck muscles, because that's probably the muscles that needs to be worked out the most, but just coming in for our re-entry here, and now me being the genius that I am, yeah, yeah, you might want to get out of time warp pretty soon, so, yeah, I, um, yeah, that, nothing happened there, just, just gonna, just, nothing happened. This is our re-entry, guys. This is our very first re-entry. This is, this is the way to do it. We have ditched that nuclear stage, obviously, because I'm not stupid. Uh, I was earlier. <laughs> and now it's gonna be burning up in the atmosphere very quickly. Nice firework show there. Totally how they do it in real life. You just ditch your, like, whatever service module and watch it explode right next to you. That's totally legit. Now we're just coming through our... Final deceleration, a lot of G's getting pulled, but Kerbals are tough. They you know, they can black out, and then they can come back and immediately continue flying their command pod all the way back down to the surface as we cross around 10-ish kilometers now in a few seconds, and then we'll deploy our chute at the last second because I don't want to spend, like, ages floating down with the parachute because that would be very, very boring, and we are a very interesting place here at Piolet 1549 Studios. It is incredible, so fun, so amazing. We have the best Discord. No, just kidding. We're not, that said I'd be done. I don't know. If you're interested, feel free to join. It's actually quite fun. We have quite a few active members. So thank you guys if you're on the Discord and I, you know, talk to you guys. Great, great fun talking to you guys. 
popping that chute now just the one parachute because why not i think it kind of looks cool with the kind of the thing dangling sideways it kind of looks like how you know dragon comes in like that i think that's like a decent look i was gonna time warp down to the land to the land to the bottom so, sorry if uh youtube is killing the quality of the video at night time that's just a thing it does but can't do anything about that but we can do stuff about is our landing which has now completed and that is going to bring us to the end of today's epic amazing great fantastic the best kerbal it's no okay that's just thank you for watching everybody <laughs> yeah okay uh yeah i'm okay i'm just gonna stop thank you for watching we'll see you next time please rate or comment to this video once again thank you for watching we will see you next time and bye.